بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My brothers and sisters, the Prophet Ibrahim عليه السلام, when he was a young boy, he watched his father carving idols from stone and so on, and worshiping them and selling them and trading in them. And as a young boy, he always had a question about faith. Who do I worship? Why do I worship whoever I'm going to worship? And so on. These questions are very healthy. For that reason, do not shun your children when they have questions that might be tough and difficult. If you are guilty not to have enough knowledge about your own faith that you cannot respond to your children, it's about time you expanded your own knowledge. Because many children out there today are asking questions and these questions are relevant. They sometimes because of exposure to people of other faiths, to people of no faith, they begin to have a few doubts because of their lack of knowledge. Someone needs to clear it for them and it's as clear as the sun, even clearer than the sun. So for you to just shout or scream or yell or expel your children or anyone else within the family or your circle simply because they have questions would actually be wrong. You need to find the answers and engage them in a beautiful way. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness and ease. So Ibrahim alayhi salam then decided, let me search for whom I should worship. A very powerful and interesting question and at the same time a very very interesting idea coming from a child and he says everything around us must be made by a maker there must be a creator it cannot be that there is coincidence and we are just there suddenly subhanallah a little child and this is why the prophet abraham may peace be upon him is considered one of the most special beings unto allah khalilullah Allah has taken Ibrahim as a close friend. Khalil is one of the highest levels of friendship. And why? Because Allah Almighty tested him so much and he passed every single test. You see the Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him. The Jews claim he was a Jew. The Christians claim he was a Christian. The Quran has the answer to it. What a powerful answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in such a beautiful way. مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian. And Allah says in another verse, Allah says, وَمَا أُنزِلَتِ التَّوْرَاتُ وَالْإِنْجِيلُ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ The Torah and the Bible were revealed far after Abraham. So how could you claim he was a Jew or a Christian when Judaism and Christianity came after Abraham? Allah says he was a submitter. He was one who submitted unto Allah. He actually prostrated only and solely for the one who made him. So let's look at his journey for a moment because it is of interest for us today. Ibrahim alayhi salam as a young boy when he questioned his father and he tricked the community by destroying some of those idols and when they came back from their festival and saw the idols were smashed. He actually, when questioned, said, well, ask them what happened if they could only speak and they knew the idols couldn't speak. So they had beef with him. They really did not like what he did. They wanted to get back at him. They expelled him from the community at some point. They tried to harm him and Allah always saved him. But he looked at when he went to a place called Haran and out in the open, he saw the stars and he says, you know what? These stars are better than the idols that my father was carving. He did not worship the stars. He only considered the greatness of the stars. And then he says, no, no, no. When the stars began to disappear, he said, it can't be. This can't be my Lord. And then a little while later, he saw the moon, beautiful, nice, bright, shining moon. He looked at the moon. He says, well, this is shining brighter than the stars. This is actually even better. He did not worship the moon, but he was considering, looking for his creator. Who created me? Who made me? And so when he looked at the moon 
And the moon began to also set. You know, the moon sets and it began to disappear. He said, that can't be my Lord. He says, oh my Lord, if you're not going to guide me, whoever you are, I'm going to be misguided. You guide me. The prayer and supplication for guidance is the most important prayer you and I could ever make. <laughs> guide us to the straight path. We repeat it every day. Wallahi, my brothers, my sisters, the dua, the supplication you make, the most powerful of all of them is to ask Allah for guidance. May Allah guide me and guide all of us and keep us on the straight path. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he continually asked Allah to guide him. He saw the sun rise in the morning and he was excited because for the first time, even though throughout his life, he used to see the sun every day, but it was the first time he considered the greatness of the sun. That's why Allah says, when you look into the creation of Allah, the night and the day and the way it moves and the sun and the moon and so on, you will discover the greatness of the maker thereafter. But for us every day, we look at things, we take it for granted. Take a moment. Allah says, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ Don't go too far. Look inside yourself. Take a look at your organs. Each one of them is a sign of the existence of Allah. How they work, how it happens. You're looking at me, I'm looking at you. You're breathing effortlessly. Subhanallah. Your heart is pumping 136,000 times a day and you don't even realize. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, and you still think we don't exist. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Each one of your limbs, your organs, your ears, your lips, your nose, your, your nostrils, the hair in your nose and why it's there is just a miracle from Allah. It's not a coincidence. Those who tell you that are actually not even dreaming because a dream itself is a miracle. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. May Allah Almighty grant us guidance. So Ibrahim alayhi salam looks at the sun and he says, you know what? Wow, this is bigger than all of it. Wow. He's looking. He did not worship the sun, but he's considering where is my maker? And then he realized something powerful, the most powerful statement. And the Quran has it in the Quran. I turn my face in worship to the one who created the heavens and the earth, the skies and the earth. Everything I'm seeing, whoever made this, he is my Lord. And I turn my face to him alone without associating a single partner with him in worship. And I will worship him and him alone. He discovered Allah. In today's journey, you and I, we are fortunate the bulk of us may be born Muslims. But there are people out there on a daily basis turning to Islam because they are discovering Allah. Every day. People are turning to Islam in their thousands across the globe. Islam is truly the fastest growing religion, without a doubt. But recently, not too long ago, I said there are many people who are leaving Islam, perhaps the largest in number, which is also true, but it is relative. I'm not talking about Islam losing out in any way. What I'm saying, because there are billions of Muslims, when you have 0.001%, that figure is bigger than other faiths who have smaller numbers. So it doesn't mean we are the bottom of the log. We are actually at the top of it. But at the same time, there are people who leave, people who come. The people who are coming in are far larger in number than those who are exiting who are few comparatively, but more than in the past because of our sheer numbers. And most of them, they exit and a little while later they come back again because they realize, you know what, what's in the market is not good. A guy who drives a, sorry to give you such a silly example, a guy who drives a Mercedes S-Class, no matter what, he's going to come back to that car because say what you want. A Mercedes is a Mercedes. Sorry, the guys who are BMW fans here are just looking at me. Eh? It's okay, they used to call it BMW before. But now it's a slightly better car. I don't have beef with vehicles. It's okay. I still believe in Toyota. But at the same time, my brothers, my sisters, you in faith, which is a proper real example, even if you have doubts and questions, you go, you find the answers. You keep asking. A day will come when you come back to where you were. You'll come back. So it's our duty to really help 
ourselves by expanding our knowledge and understanding. Go out and study the faiths. It's not wrong. Go and check. What do they worship? Why do they worship? We worship whoever made us, the Creator and Him alone. Nobody else, nothing else, no messenger, no prophet. Although we honor the prophets, we actually, their status is the highest. We believe that they are superb human beings who were the best sent to us in order to teach us how to worship the one who made us. That's what it is. Allah. That's why we say, when you want to enter the fold of Islam, and that's what I want to talk about briefly. Many people are sending emails, messages, in person they see you, I want to be Muslim, what do I do? What is the procedure? Hey, the procedure is minor. Ibrahim alayhi salam, what did he say? He, he entered the fold of submission completely by declaring, I face my face to the one who made me and the heavens and the earth alone and I will never render an act of worship for anyone or anything besides him. That was entering the fold of faith, submission. So he said, That's his declaration of faith. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of any act of worship, be it big or small, besides the one who made me. Well, that's faith. No religion can ever debate this. Because the one who made me is the only one who I can put my head on the ground and say, Oh, you who made me, you are the greatest, you are the highest. Oh, you who gives me, sustains me, controls everything, who cures me, who does whatever he wants with me. You are the highest. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. We repeat that statement so many times a day. Every time we are in prostration. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. 34 times minimum a day. Because why? You're making units of prayer. And you're going down in prostration twice for every unit. You see? May Allah grant us guidance. What a powerful statement. When you want to enter the fold of Islam or anyone else around you wants to enter Islam. And the reason I have to say this, you will have someone come to you. I want to be Muslim. Be careful. Don't shun them. Don't shun them. Talk to them. Bring them. Ask them. If they know the pillars of faith, number one, I only want to worship my maker and my maker alone. Number two, I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger and a prophet of Allah. You know, when people of other faiths say this person is a prophet and a prophet, in our country they say profita. They're talking of a religious man who can prophesy a few things. They're not talking of a prophet of Allah who actually is a Nabi, who is a messenger, who came with revelation. They're not talking about that. We are talking of another level altogether. When we say Nabi, we are talking of Jesus, may peace be upon him. Abraham, may peace be upon him. Moses, may peace be upon him. Aaron, may peace be upon him. Solomon, may peace be upon him. David, may peace be upon him. Joseph, may peace be upon him. Jacob, may peace be upon him. And so on. John, may peace be upon him. And the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon them all. I use the English terminology just for those of other faiths. To realize and recognize, we use Arabic. But these names are the same. These are the same people. They all, we revere them, we respect them, we honor them, we give them the highest ranking ever. No one can rank higher than the prophets of Allah. So when you bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger of Allah, and you bear witness that you are only going to worship the one who made you, already you're a Muslim. Entry level, you've come in. That statement, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says it is so heavy in the scale of good deeds that on the day of judgment, if you have 99 files full of bad deeds, each file from the east to the west, and on the other hand, you have one time that statement of I bear witness, there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger. That is heavier than all of those in the eyes of Allah. For as long as you were genuine, may Allah grant us acceptance even once. So don't shun someone if they have accepted the basics and the five simple pillars of Islam and the six simple pillars of faith. Let me quickly repeat them. The pillars of Islam. Number one is a declaration by your mouth. As we said, there is none worthy of worship besides my maker. We call him Allah because he calls himself Allah, which refers to the worshipped one. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger. The five daily prayers, the fasting in the month of Ramadan, the charities, if I'm a wealthy person, to give to poor people. And if once in my lifetime, if I can, I will go for Hajj. Do you believe that in principle? Yes, I do. Number two, do you believe 
in the six pillars of faith what are they amantu billahi i believe in allah wa malaikatihi and the angels angels exist wa kutubihi and the books the injil and so on all of the previous books that were given to the previous prophets you believe in them in principle yes i do wa rusulihi and all the messengers respectfully we do not agree with previous scriptures that have spoken bad about any of the messengers or prophets of allah we believe they were honorable men and whatever negativity is there in a disrespectful way we deny it islam does not agree with it they say lot slept with his daughters astaghfirullah we don't agree they say jesus had an affair astaghfirullah that is blasphemous we don't agree with this we don't we they say mary had an affair we don't agree with that either and so on so in principle even solomon and david they have really bad things to say about them for us as muslims they were honorable they were the best of the best and allah chose them he would not have chosen otherwise if i'm an imam in the masjid and you know bad about me it's your right if you want to walk out you can walk out why because i don't feel comfortable behind this person who's a thug he's a robber he's a cheat he's a scum of society i must read my salah behind him no chance just like your zakah you have your money to give a poor person but he's a drunkard a drug addict you have a right to say i don't want to give you because it's zakah it's wealth i need to engage in an act of worship i rather give someone who's going to who's going to pray and do good deeds so i can get a double triple reward there we go so the same applies why would allah send to us a messenger whom no one liked he had bad qualities and habits it didn't happen so you believe in the the messengers wa rusulihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al akhir you believe in the last day that there is a last day and you believe there is going to be heaven and hell and there is accountability yes do you believe that good and bad fate is from allah when good things happen i must not become arrogant when bad things happen i must not become depressed I must relate it to Allah. Good came to me, I become a better person. When Allah gave me so much, I must be humble and I must treat those who work for me with greater respect than I treat myself. Allahu Akbar. Then you're a mu'min. Then you're a believer. And when something bad happens, your factory burnt down, you thank Allah. Because sabr is an act of worship that Allah gives you an opportunity to engage in. You have to engage in it. At some point, you will suffer a loss. Some point, something wrong will happen in your life. Thank Allah. Oh Allah, for 40 years, you kept me so good. Today, you tested me. You took away everything. No problem. We start again. New name. Inshallah. Subhanallah. Allah loves you. Allah loves you. Why? Because Allah says, Yawmun laka, yawmun alayk. A day for you and a day against you. When it's for us, we are good. When it's against us, what happens? Allah says, we did it to test you. That's Allah. Do you believe in these principles? If the answer is yes, repeat after me. Ashhadu, ashhadu. Allah, Allah. Ilaha, ilaha. Illa Allah, illa Allah. I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger. You are a Muslim. There is no specific ceremony. You don't need to go to an imam. You don't need to go to the public. You don't need to go to a place. You can do it yourself between you and Allah and you are a Muslim, but do not delay it. So when someone comes to you and says, I want to be Muslim, ask them a few questions, teach them halal, haram, basics. Do you know we're not allowed to eat? Except that which has been slaughtered in a certain way for these reasons. Do you know that we're not allowed to have pork, alcohol, etc.? These basics, you and I know them. Do you accept that? Yes. If a man is a drunkard and he says, look, I know this is prohibited and I accept that it is prohibited, but I have a weakness. Sometimes I drink. The fact that he knows it's prohibited and believes that it's prohibited, he can enter the fold of Islam. How many Muslims actually do bad deeds, but they know it's wrong. The fact that you know it's wrong, you're still a Muslim. But when you justify, no, I'm a Muslim, but there's nothing wrong with pork. And then you, call yourself something else, please. Don't call yourself a Muslim. For example, people who come about and say, well, my inclinations, I'm inclined towards animals. I can do whatever I want, but I'm still a Muslim. Hang on. If you believe it's wrong, then you can still be a Muslim. If you believe there's nothing wrong with it, you're following another faith. Don't confuse yourself and others by saying, I'm a Muslim and I sleep with animals. Relax, relax. What you need to do is you need to understand what you are following is not actually the faith the rest of us are following. Why do you want to confuse yourself and others by saying I'm a Muslim? Relax. You got to say, I actually do not follow Islam because I disagree with X, Y and Z. There we go. Then we, everything is in order. You are not confused and you're not confusing others. Maybe your deeds are confused, but may Allah grant us and everyone else guidance. So my brothers, my sisters, that is how you enter the fold of Islam. When someone comes to you and wants you to wants to ask you and says, I want to enter Islam, don't waste time. In five minutes, you must sort the matter out.
Because you don't know what's going to happen after that. And you don't have to wait for another person. Because why give them the honor of it? You let them declare shahada. There was a man who came to me with some people and said they want to enter Islam. I said, I want, I want you to say the shahada for them because you worked with them. They, why should I take the honor of all of that? He said, oh, I didn't think of that. On the day of judgment, when someone has accepted Islam on your hands, do you know every good deed they ever did, you have a full reward for all of those deeds. Subhanallah. That's why they say it's almost like you're going to get Jannah for free. So let people come into Islam. Don't make it difficult for them. And then the rest of the teachings of Islam, one of the most important teachings of Islam, once you declare your shahada is to learn tahara. Tahara is cleanliness. The other day they were selling me baby soft tissues on the traffic lights. I show you, I'm sure you guys have seen this in Zimbabwe at the traffic lights. They sell you a big box, a big packet of baby soft tissues. Have you seen that? The traffic lights. I opened my window. I said, ah, Shamari, ini ni doshan di samvura. And di se pepa so. It's my brother. I don't use this. I use water. He looked at me and he started laughing. <laughs> and I explained to him, you're selling me tissue, but I use water. Subhanallah. Immediately he knew. Then when I passed again, he looked at me. He says, ah, you are the samvura. You are the guy who uses water. I said, eh, hey, ongo, ongo, ini. You know? So it's amazing because one of the first teachings of Islam is how to use the toilet and to wash your backsides. Subhanallah. Don't be ashamed of it. Talk about it. It's an honorable teaching. The world went to Qatar for World Cup. They were mesmerized by a shattaf. Shattaf is the little spray. The little spray to wash a bum. Subhanallah, we took it for granted. People changed their lives because of that. I know people who became Muslims because of that little spray. I'm saying I better talk about it more often in my speeches. We are, we are shy. The cleanest of all of us. Who are they? The Muslimin. Subhanallah, ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah Almighty grant us ease and goodness. You should be considering yourself honored to talk about any teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here we go, my brothers and sisters. I know time is not on my side. I'm watching it. But at the same time, it's a very important topic. And what prodded me to do this is, of late, too many people are entering Islam. MashaAllah, we are happy. Many people. But... Sometimes people are delaying. Please, I need to do this. I need to come to the mosque. You don't need to. You can declare it now. My brother, my sister, whoever you are, wherever you are, you want to be a Muslim, you say, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides my maker, Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger. You are a Muslim. Slowly, as you learn, bit by bit, you put into practice more and more. One might say, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to. Do you believe you have to pray? Yes. Well, now you start learning and first day, slowly, slowly. Slowly, slowly, as you learn, you practice, as you learn, you practice. And in that way, inshallah, we will all enter paradise and jannah together.